So I also encourage everyone to listen to the RFK conversation with Rogan, three hours. Um, it's, it's remarkable. And the other piece of it that uh, Prasad takes on, which, you know, with which he strenuously disagrees, it's not just the repurposed drugs, ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, it's childhood vaccine safety, right? So Prasad focuses on RFK Jr.'s contention that childhood MMR and DTaP vaccines are responsible for the rise in autism. I don't know. If you had said that to me two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and people did, I would have said, no, stop it. I'm not not going there, not listening, not interested. Well, one has to begin to be interested in looking and going there at this point. I don't want to. I haven't gone there yet, but I don't know. I am not simply going to dismiss it out of hand as I have in the past. And frankly, um, again, the links that Prasad puts up as his evidence um, against the claims that Kennedy makes are puff pieces. One is to the Mayo Clinic. Oh, Mayo Clinic, they're doing medicine. They must know. But it's a puff piece. It just asserts the safety of childhood vaccines, but it once again doesn't actually provide any evidence. So assertions are not evidence. Assertions are not science. Assertions are not the basis on which we should be deciding what it is to inject into our children. It's not, it's not how it's supposed to work. And again, I don't want to be here, right? I don't know. However, there is another claim that Kennedy makes uh, on, on Rogan's podcast uh, that I do have some knowledge about, uh, which is one that uh, there hasn't been nearly as much focus on, which is that he says, and I don't have the direct quote, I wasn't sure exactly where it was in there, I don't have the direct quote, something to the effect of none of the vaccines currently in the childhood vaccination schedule in the U.S. have been tested against placebo. Put aside for the moment whether, it's, whether or not it's true, we'll get there. What does it mean? What does it mean if it is true? What does the claim mean? Uh, basically, all new drugs, including vaccines, are supposedly safety tested, as we are, all should be well familiar with at this point. And everyone imagined that that was the case until, you know, even before COVID, right? Like, obviously, the drugs have been safety tested. That's what the FDA is for. That's what all of the, you know, that's what the CDC is for. That's like what all of these organizations are for. I guess the CDC decides what's on the schedule, and the FDA is doing the, is doing the safety testing. Um, specifically, phase three clinical trials, uh, which is part of the vaccine safety system in the U.S., um, have at least two groups, those who received the new treatment, the new drug, the treatment, and those who did not, the control, treatment versus control. Many of these phase three clinical trials have more than those two groups. They may have multiple treatments. Um, they may even have multiple controls. But the control group, the control group should be a group that does not know that they have not received the drug, but who is otherwise undrugged at base, right? Like that's what the control group should be. They don't know, and best if it's, you know, double, triple, quadruple blind, where like no one knows whether or not you as a, as a participant in a trial have or have not received the treatment, right? No one knows. Um, they should in short receive a placebo, right? Uh, in the case of an injection, it should be a saline injection. It should be, you know, if, if, if the treatment is an injection, you're going to have to receive an injection as part of the control group, else you know that you have not received. I would just add one thing. Um, at some point, we can get back to placebos and the placebo effect, but it is important, irrespective of what you think of the placebo effect, it is important to have the elements of the yes. interaction yes. that are short of the molecule or whatever being tested right? Mm -hmm. So they will even go to the extent in the case of surgical uh, treatments of giving a sham surgery so that if the anesthetic, for example, is having some effect, that that is neutralized because both groups have gotten it. So neutralizing the effect of the interaction with the system is important, having nothing to do actually with what people commonly understand the placebo effect to be about. The placebo is the neutralization of those other effects. Right. Um, now, that throws a bit of a wrench in here, and I think we're not going to go there, but you, we will probably end up coming back to it another time. Um, the idea of anesthetic being part of a, of a, a control, it's not then a placebo because anesthetic does have an effect, right? So uh, if you have, if it's an injection, um, if it's an injectable drug uh, that is being tested in a, in a phase three clinical trial, uh, you have the injection with all of its ingredients in, in, the, in the treatment group, and you should have 
uh, a saline injection in the other with none of the ingredients of the thing in the control group. So testing vaccines against placebo, or no, none of the things that are in the treatment group rather, testing vaccines against placebo is critical. Um, RFK claims that vaccines currently in the childhood vaccine schedule have not been tested against placebo. If true, how could that possibly be true, right? Uh, what else would they test new childhood vaccines against? Like, how, how is it? How could it possibly be true that the things that almost all of us are injecting into our, our babies um, and our children throughout their early lives um, not been tested against not having the drug at all? Well, it is true. And the, the question of what constitutes a placebo does begin to get us into a little bit of, um, of complicated waters here. But here's just three examples. I haven't I have not independently verified this is true for every single childhood currently recommended on the childhood vaccine schedule by the CDC, um, but I have seen very careful analyses, um, and I just haven't gone into the actual um, the pharmaceutical reports that are the inserts with the vaccines for all of them, but for some of them I have. So here are just three examples. DTaP, which is the diphtheria, tetanus, and aciliary pertos perto hmm, pertussis vaccine, um, has never been tested against placebo. What has been tested against is the older DTP vaccine. And the older DTP vaccine, which was generated in the 1930s, was never subject to, uh, to the clinical trials at all. DTP is in fact known to be dangerous. And so we all know, all we, all we know rather, all we know is that if the clinical trials for DTaP were otherwise done well, even if everything else was according to protocol and according to good scientific thinking, all we know, if they, if DTAP comes out looking good in those clinical trials, is that it is not as dangerous as the DTP vaccine was. We have no evidence that DTAP itself is safe relative to not getting any vaccine at all. Okay. Similarly, yeah, that's an egregious abuse of the concept of placebo. Right. So, and I, I have reason to believe that this is the case for every single one of the vaccines currently on the childhood vaccine schedule. This is abhorrent, okay? So here's the other two that I specifically looked into, and there are, of course, many more, as we've talked about in the last couple of weeks when we were talking about the book Where There Is No Doctor and the recent changes to the childhood vaccine schedule, both in the U.S. and worldwide. HIV, which is hemophilus influenzae type B, was never tested against placebo. It was tested against, depending on the trial, there were lots of different trials, lots of different vaccines, because, because um, as Kennedy also reports in that Rogan um, conversation, uh, basically end of the Reagan years, uh, pharma, pharma gets a release on immunity from things. And so we start to get, the market starts to get flooded with vaccines, okay? So there's a lot of HIV vaccines out there, um, a lot of different trials. Um, it's never tested against placebo in any one of them. It's tested against a different HIV vaccine. It's tested against DTaP, which again was tested against DTP, which wasn't tested against anything at all. It's tested against other vaccines yet, or in some cases, it's tested against literally all of those at once. No placebo test at all, okay? So how do we know that they're safe? One more. Mm -hmm. Pneumococcal disease, also never tested against placebo. Prevnar 13, which is the newest version of the vaccine uh, for pneumococcal disease, was tested against... Prevnar, the original version, okay? What was Prevnar tested against? Oh, that was a control group um, that received an experimental meningococcal vaccine. The original Prevnar, the original pneumococcal disease vaccine was tested against another experimental vaccine. And now the new Prevnar vaccine is tested against that first one, which was tested against a different experimental vaccine. None of them ever tested against placebo. In none of these cases do we actually know if they are safe relative to just not getting an injection at all uh, with, with, with these drugs, safe relative to getting an injection with saline. That is what we need to have happen. So I don't know. I don't know what is true about childhood vaccine safety. I don't, I don't know. Um, what I do know is that the vaccines that we're giving our children have not been tested in the way that everyone, if they thought about it, would assume they had been tested. And that, that is shocking. So... Um, I've come up with a principle for how to think about such things because what you know, what you've just described yeah. is a situation in which a 
signal of harm could easily be masked by such a protocol. Um, does that mean that there is a signal of harm? We don't know. So the principle is there are many things in a category, and the category is I don't know if it does harm, but I can tell you that it isn't safe. Right? And you and I have drawn this distinction between uh, these two things before. When you, If you drive home drunk and you make it, Right? Was harm done? No. Was it safe? No. Right. So safe does not mean harmless, right? Safe means that there was no risk. So in this case, we don't know in the case of those three vaccines whether or not there is a signal of harm that is being masked, but there is a place that it could easily be masked, and therefore we can't say it's absent. How is it possible that so-called safety testing is being done that has no chance of revealing whether or not that harm is being done? Well, even worse. How is right? that possible? So again, go back to your pre-COVID mindset. Right. Um, pharma can't be trusted because it has a perverse incentive. Mm -hmm. right? Let's imagine that, are there bad studies? Yes, it happens all the time. Does pharma create bad studies? Yes, there are books actually on how pharma creates bad studies. Is it possible for pharma to get a dangerous drug or vaccine authorized? Uh, yeah. Um, right. It it happens, or approved is probably the better term. Yes. So what happens if pharma manages to get a vaccine approved in spite of having a, a massive risk? And then they start using that as their placebo to test other things, right? right. Something that does harm, right, that you can then use as a placebo against other things to mask harm that they might do. So if you imagine that pharma, like a, an immune deficiency syndrome, is carving a hole in the regulatory apparatus so that it can put more drugs on the market and make profit, this yeah. would be a great way to do it, is to redefine what placebo means right. and then use that mechanism to get dangerous stuff used as placebos, which then causes the drugs in question not to seem to have a safety signal. There's one of these uh, childhood vaccines, and I don't remember which one at the moment, uh, I apologize, um, that one of the tr clinical trials did compare um, and this may seem analogous to your surgery example, right? Mm -hmm. Did compare the treatment, the full vaccine, to the control group, which was everything in the vaccine except the actual, um, the actual, I don't remember, the actual pathogen. Yep. Um, so that might seem like, and, and you know, you, you could sort of squint at that and go like, well, okay, so we're just testing whether or not it's the actual uh you know, virus um, in the medicine that's doing the harm. However, what you've done there is you've injected babies and young children literally with the slew of contaminants that are adjuvants that are there in order to prompt the immune system to have a reaction and not given them the actual medicine. So that's not only is that not a placebo, that's criminal. Well, it, it is, you can come up, sophistry can be used to generate a justification for that, right? For anything, apparently. Were you actually interested in safety, in order to get to that justification, you would have had to test all of those things against an actual placebo before you then used them to test the the uh, important ingredient. But nonetheless, this is another... And, all of, and not all of them one-on-one -on -one either, right. like that, but also the, the, whole, the, the cocktail minus the actual potential efficacious agent, which is the, you know, the virus, the attenuated virus or whatever it is. Um, and the whole thing is one. And the whole thing is one. Like you have to do all of those, all of those comparisons in order to know whether or not what you've got is safe. But this is another sleight of hand, right? Because as with the case of, um, you know, narrowly testing the, uh, the vaccines against um, an endpoint, right? When what you really want to know is, is there an all-cause mortality benefit to this vaccine, yes. right? I want to know what the yes. net impact of injecting somebody with this is, right? But instead, what they're going to do is they're going to focus on the minutiae when the real point is, look, I don't care if it makes me safer from COVID if I'm likely to die sooner from some slew of other inputs, right? right. So I want to know what the net impact is. And this is the same thing yes. where the idea is actually, I don't really care if the molecule in question, the the uh, antigen that they're using or the attenuated virus or whatever it is that they're using, 
what I want to know is the net impact of the injection, right? right? And so anyway, there's a lot of sleight of hand, as you would imagine, if pharma had completely captured the entire sector, right? Yes, why? Why? Why are they being allowed to so-called safety test vaccines in this way? Right. Well, how how is that how how is that being tolerated? And how is it that people who point it out will a hundred percent be painted with the anti-vax brush? No, this is pro-science. This is not anti-vax. This is pro-science. You people who are claiming to do safety testing by comparing known toxins to new potential toxins. That's anti-science. That's what you're doing. You are demonstrating a complete disrespect for truth, reality, science, and humanity. Like, end of story. Like, that's what they're doing.